Hey there, so in some upcoming videos, I'm going to be showing some node server administration. We're going to set up an engine X load balancer. Um, we're going to deploy some Node.js applications into the wild. Uh, but to do that, you got to be comfortable with SSH. Um, and so this video is going to kind of cover that. If you're comfortable with SSH, this video is not really for you. Uh, but a lot of devs have not really gone further than GitHub when it comes to SSH. Uh, so this video is going to get into it and show you how fun and uh, just powerful it is. So basically SSH just opens up a secure shell to another machine. Usually it's going to be a Linux machine. Uh, and it just basically gets you into the terminal of that machine. So I can go SSH will, which is my username at um, supercars.com which is a fake uh, machine but uh, that I've created. But basically, supercars.com is going to point to an IP address of an actual real machine sitting somewhere. Uh, so if I SSH into that, I'm basically logging into that machine as the will user. It's going to ask for my password. Um, and there you go. I'm now will at supercars. So I'm actually on that machine. Um, logged into the will user directory. Uh, so I can do everything on this machine just as if I was actually there. Um, I can install things. Let's say git is not currently installed. So I can do sudo apt git install git. Um, apt git is basically Linux's NPM or node package manager or homebrew. It allows you to install programs from the command line. Um, so I can just do this and now git is installed. So I can now, let me find a gist, I can now git clone, there you go, I can now clone a gist that I wrote the other day, and there we go, I have a git repository on my machine. So it's actually great for deployments if you want to clone your directory and pull your master branch, and this is your actual web server, there you go. Let's say you want to install MySQL, PHP, whatever, uh, you're on the machine. You can configure and administrate your machine um, all through SSH. It's really great. Um, you can also copy files um, using rsync. So let me show you what I have here. I exited, by the way. Exit is the command to get out of. You'll notice when I hit exit, I left that machine. And I'm back on my machine now, which has my kind of custom bash script here. Um, so you can use rsync. Let me show you. I have these three files in my directory. Um, and I can rsync uh, dash av is the one. And by the way, all these commands, I'm going to put them in a gist uh, and put it in the description so I don't just show you a bunch of stuff and then leave you hanging. But I can rsync av dot is my current directory. So I'm going to do all the files in this directory will at supercars.com and then colon because I'm going to actually give it a path to do that. I'm going to go home directory slash new app. It's going to ask for my password. That's kind of annoying. I'm going to show you how to do passwordless um, SSH here in a second. But you see I created the directory home will new app and I copied all these files there. Let's actually SSH in and see if that did it. It needs my password again. There we go. We have new app. So I can go CD space new app and do directory listing. And there you go. There's my files. So that's kind of a, actually a quick and dirty way to do it a deployment if you want to. You can just rsync all your files straight to your server. And now your web server is updated with your new files. It sure beats FTP. It's pretty dirty. It'd be better to actually do push it to a GitHub repo, log in and do a pull from that repo, or even better, use a deployment software like Capistrano, which we'll get into in the future uh, in some videos. There's definitely better deployment strategies, but rsync sure beats uh, FTP. Um, let me actually rm, I'm going to delete main.css here. Let's get out, and I'm going to rsync again. And then you'll notice all it did was copy main.css, because rsync is actually going to sync up it's going to find out what it needs to do. It's only going to move the files it needs to move, the files that were changed. Once again, super beats FTP. So if you're looking for a quick and dirty deployment, there you go. Uh, just rsync that thing. Uh, but we'll get into better things later on. Let's show you real quick how to do a passwordless SSH. Uh, you probably had to do this when you got set up on GitHub, is you had to make an SSH key. Um, what a key pair is, is you've got your public key, and you've got your private key. When you generate it, it will create both. Like say you create a, create a key called IDRSA, which is standard. Um, it's going to do IDRSA, which is your private key, and it's going to do IDRSA.pub. 
you're going to copy the contents of this to the server and the pub and you're going to move it to the authorized keys file and then the server knows that this id rsa key is accepted in place of a password so this is the one you want to protect with your life uh, because anybody with this file can access your server that has this file installed so what we're going to do is we're going to install this right here onto our server and then anytime we have this key we can connect without a password uh, so to do that we just go to our user folder and go to ssh directory if that's not there you're going to have to create it um, and then Whoops, I just made it one called SSH without the dot. So you're going to make a directory called .ssh, which it says um, it's already there. So, um, And then if you don't see an IDRSA file, which I just deleted mine, you're going to want to generate one. That's easy, SSH key gen. And then the only thing you're going to want to do is capital C, and you're going to want to give it a comment that kind of differentiates it to you. Usually just do your email address. There we go. Um, and then it's going to say you want to make it this file, IDRSA. Sure, hit enter. Uh, passphrase, I'm going to do no passphrase. So if I hit LS now, I have IDRSA and IDRSA.pub. You're going to open this and you're going to copy the contents to your clipboard. Or if you want to do it the quick way, you can go cat id rsa.pub pipe pb copy so i'm going to copy that to my clipboard and now i'm going to ssh will at supercars.com again i'm getting tired of typing my password so now we are going to go into my ssh folder it doesn't exist so i'm going to actually make it and then i'm going to get into it and i'm going to use nano which is kind of like a command line text editor there's Nano, Emacs, and Vim, which are kind of the three popular ones. My favorite is Vim, although it's the most complicated. Uh, Nano is the easiest, so if you're not used to it, use Nano. I'm going to Nano a file called authorized underscore keys, uh, which it may already exist. If it already exists, this will open it. If it doesn't exist, Nano will create it. I can now paste in my key contents. I can exit and I can save. Um, which, by the way, let me show you what I was doing here. I did Control X to exit. One thing that's nice about Nano is it gives you like kind of a menu at the bottom. Uh, Control X and then Y to save. And it says hit enter. Yep. So now if I hit LS, I have a file called Authorized Keys. And in that is my IDRSA pub. You can add 30 different keys if you want. So 30 different people can all SSH into your uh, machine without a password. I can now hit exit, and now let me go back to my folder that I was in, code, sandbox, uh, I think it was just SSH, there we go, so now let me pull up that rsync command again, there we go, and now it does not ask for a password, I can also go SSH will at supercars.com, and it didn't ask for a password. So now I can actually create like a bash script that did 50 different things on my server and it wouldn't need a password for it. I could run one command that runs the script and it does this whole server script. So when you've seen bash scripting, that's pretty much a lot of times along the lines of the things you're looking at doing. Uh, but that's pretty much SSH in a nutshell. It allows you to securely connect to another server or run some commands on it, administrate that server. Um, and in the next video, we're going to show you how to create your own Linux server on your machine using Vagrant uh, and VirtualBox. And so you can mess with and get to know server administration better without blowing up your actual live web server or someone else's live web server. So let's get into that next video, which is on Vagrant.